Hello, hello, my dear friends. This is your friend Vivek Bajaj, co-founder of StockEdge and Elon Markets. Welcome to yet another face-to-face and yet another amazing, amazing learning we are going to have today. In this kind of a market scenario, which is quite volatile, there are ups and downs literally every day, and uh, there is a fair bit of uncertainty. At least uh, I can see in Indian market there is some bit of uncertainty going on, and this is testing our nerves. Now, what do you do when your nerve is getting tested? You remain cool and calm and you go back to the basics of learning the process. And also you try to find out how do I keep my EQ strong enough? EQ means emotional caution. Now for a trader, I also acknowledge that uh, for a trader, the biggest strength a trader carries for a lifetime is this, the mental strength, the trading psychology and the time when you need to react and when you don't need to react. So today we are going to have a very comprehensive discussion on trading psychology. And I was able to locate a lovely person on Twitter who really likes, writes commendable things on trading psychology, someone who understands this subject quite well. So I'm going to invite him for this face-to-face. Let me welcome a friend of mine, Ivan, into this discussion. Hello, Ivan. Hi, Vivek. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a real honor to be able to to be here in front of you and and your audience and to present myself and the work that I do. Uh, uh, And and, an intelligent audience, I would add, because they seek to understand the market and how to successfully operate within it. And I mean, they're they're in the right place. I mean, I've been watching some, some of the interviews you've had with other folks in, in, in the field and they'll, they've been all great. So, yeah. I'm actually blessed that uh, so many of you have accepted my invitation and, uh, you know, without any ulterior motive, you have just given your best content to me. And Ivan, uh, I know that you have some roots from India. So let us know more about you first, and then we get into that amazing presentation you have made for us. Right. Right. So I'm so, so again, my name is Ivan Baiji. I was I was born and raised on the island of Mauritius, which is a tiny tropical island uh, on the east coast of, of Madagascar. And, um, and and a big percentage of the population there is 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 from India. Actually, they were brought in by the British as in, indentured laborers after the abolition of slavery. Uh, in uh, 1856, I believe. And so, yes, as, as you mentioned, I do have roots in India. My, my ancestors come from Maharashtra, I believe. And um, yeah, I, I love India. I, I love, you, you know, I love the culture. You know, I, my, my dad is Hindu. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful culture, beautiful people, beautiful country. And I'm very happy to be here with you guys, with with you to sort of uh, present my material and talk about trading psychology. Amazing. And uh, Ivan, you have been trading the market since how long? Uh, You look very young, but I know your real age. Uh, So tell me how how many years you have been trading. Right. So so I'm 40 years old, Vivek, despite my juvenile looks. (laughs) And and I've, I've been a trader since 2006. Um, let me rephrase this. I, I've been trading for a living since 2006, okay. but I've been interested in financial markets and, and studying trading since at least 1996. Um, at that time, I was still a teenager, you know, 16, 17 years old. And I remember one day I was hanging out in my high school's library and I saw the book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market by Nicholas mm. Darvis. And I took it, brought it home out of curiosity and began reading it slowly, a little bit every every day. And lo and behold, I I became fascinated by Darvis's life and the success he had achieved in the market. I mean, mean, that's what piqued my interest initially. Uh, Yeah, then over the years, I made it my mission to save enough money for a decent trading account. And in 2016, I jumped full time into the endeavor. Uh, But Vivek, needless to say, my journey to consistency um, wasn't straightforward. It it, it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be. 
I struggled a lot on my way to consistent profitability in the market. You know, lots, lots of ups and downs. Uh, the, the market handed me the same lesson, you know, the same lessons many times over before they finally seeped into my bones, you know. And one area where I struggled the most was my trading psychology, my mindset. And so this is why this is the, 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 the center of my focus now as a trading psychology coach, as a, as a trading psychology consultant. Yes, it, it's pretty much everyone's story. Some people just give up and move out and some people fight like you and know exactly where the formula of success lies. So Ivan, um, I want to go deep dive into that concept which you have. And I'm, I'm a big fan of your Twitter handle and the way you Thank communicate. You so so I, let's, let's get deep into trading psychology and let's not have any time foundation. Just keep, and let me allow me to ask as many stupid questions as possible. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> and no, no questions are stupid, but yeah. by, by the way, if yeah. it helps shed light on something that then they're anything but stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right, let me share my screen. Uh, all right. So um, let me first by uh, talking a little bit, let, let me first start by talking a little bit about about trading psychology, what it is, and and the the implications of it. So, people will often use the term market psychology and trading psychology interchangeably. I personally like to make a distinction between those two, between market psychology and trading psychology. Market psychology is is a study of historical um, his historical buying and selling behavior as as that appears on the chart. You, you know you know, the trends, patterns, and, and streaks that generate. Uh, and, and, and we study that because we're trying to gain insight into the future, in, in, into what the future could be. Not axiomatic, but could be, as, as in has the potential to be. And trading psychology, on the other hand, I, I like to think of it more as 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 uh, the, the mindset that one brings with them into the trading arena. And it can be a good mindset, like, like good in, in that it's conducive to, um, to you making money in the market, or, or it can be a bad mindset in, in that it's conducive to, to you losing money in the market. So I feel as a trader, it's important to develop a, a good, a, a winning trading psychology, one that helps you make money and, and, and keep money, very important. You, you have to be able to keep what you make, right? Yeah. And this is where I help traders. Uh, uh, you, you know, the work that I do at Trading Composure is essentially, you know, a trading, a deep trading psychology work, a mindset work. So a little bit about me, uh, as I said earlier, uh, you, you know, I've been trading for a living since 2006. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, and, and I said earlier, I struggled a lot with it. I, my mindset wasn't at the right place. You know, I didn't have a winning trading psychology. In short, trading losses would break me mentally, spiritually, even though I was really good at keeping those losses on, on, you know, under control. So I had to constantly learn new things and unlearn others, you know, limiting beliefs and all of that. But eventually I was able to chart a more profitable path for myself. And nowadays, I manage a multi-million dollar fund for me and my clients from, from the comfort of my own home. And Vivek, I'm such an introverted person and, and reserved person, and never in a thousand years would have thought that I'd be managing people's money, you know, one day, but here we are today. Anyway, you could say that I'm doing pretty well for myself, and I say this with a lot of humility, I've been very fortunate, especially given my background. I, I mean, I don't come from money to begin with. I come from a very poor family. We lived on welfare programs and food stamps and all of that. That was my reality growing up. And, and that's what got me so attracted to the market from such an early age, you know. Uh, right from the start, I understood that if I mastered trading, I would be able to lift myself and my family out of poverty. And one of the most critical yeah, I would say one of the most critical uh, issues facing the world today is 
the, the, the wealth gap, you know, but mm -hmm. thanks to the internet and the accessibility of things like trading and investing and, and, and YouTube channels like, like yours, Vivek, the disparity between the haves and the have nots can be reduced in, in a way that has never been possible before. And I find that very appealing. So, so that's a little bit about me in a nutshell, where I was and where I, where I currently am. And so I said earlier, trading is a mental game. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's trading psychology is very important and trading success is, is possible, but it requires a lot of work initially. And, and the mindset of trading, AKA trading psychology is where I would say the bulk of the work needs to be done in my opinion. And yes, even for systematic rule-based traders, because trading at the end of the day is, is a mental game. It's, it's a game you play against yourself because you're the one making the, the decisions and pulling the trigger ultimately. And if you have, you know, if you have a lot of internal conflicts and limiting beliefs, and if, if, if you have a short fuse and, and don't know how to manage your emotions, I mean, winning as a trader is, is practically impossible. You, you will tend to make a lot of a lot of costly trading errors and, and you won't get anywhere sin significant in this endeavor. So trading psychology is very important. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very important yet underrated as aspect of trading, underrated, underappreciated. Um, and that's, that's sad, that's, that's unfortunate because market edge and trading psychology edge, they, they go hand in hand, Vivek. And now, because most people don't appreciate the, 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 the trading psychology element of trading, uh, well, the failure rate is high in this endeavor. You know, I, I think conventional wisdom suggests that 90% of all traders fail. Uh, broker, brokerage firms even situate, based on the research search they've made, they even situate that number a little higher. And I'm, I'm not saying this to discourage your audience, Vivek. It's, it's to really help them understand that you need all the spokes in the wheel, so to speak, to, to make trading a viable thing. If, if you focus on, on the different aspect of trading and exclude trading psychology, trading is just not going to be a, a, a profitable thing long term. You know, if, if, even if you have a profitable trading system. Mm. All right. You, you need to give as much time to trading psychology as you give to risk management or chart chart analysis or what have you. You have to approach trading from this more this this more this this more holistic point of view, you know, and give equal importance to each of its you know elements: technical analysis, risk management, uh, um, um, and psychology. Sure, because trading. Trading is not just about about uh, you know finding uh, you know the the right trades. It's about how you manage yourself in the midst of uncertainty. Mm. And I don't know if you've heard about that. I I think uh, Business Insider wrote an article about this uh, um, a couple of years ago. Billionaire trader and hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones pays Tony Robbins, the, the renowned motivational speaker millions, Vivek, literally millions of dollars each year to, to help him with his trading psychology. And you, you know, don't believe me, just Google it when you have a moment. I, I believe Business Insider wrote an article on this. And, and I mean, that's how important trading psychology is, all right? Yet, you know, once again, retail traders have a tendency to think that the psychological aspect is unimportant or, or they think that they, they already have it figured out. And this truly puts them at a disadvantage, you know? True. Now, okay, so we've established the importance of trading psychology. Now, if you, go, if you do a quick Google search of the term, you'll find an onslaught of trading psychology solutions out there. In, you know, you know, you'll, uh, you know NLP, uh, psychotherapy, uh, what else? Hypnosis and all of that, all to help you gain a, a, a sort of trading psychology edge in the market. Um, but let's not sugarcoat things. Most, most uh, solutions out there are, I would say, surface level. They, they're surface level solutions. What, what you find 
on the internet is surface level articles and, and solutions that don't produce don't produce reliable results that are too generic and, and not insightful enough or practical enough to be truly helpful. Um, and yeah, on, on, honestly, or, or else, you know, the, the failure rate in trading wouldn't be as high, right? So what I want to do here, Vivek, is, is pre present to you and your audience a solution to emotional trading, not a magic solution, but, but a practice that if you can cultivate and sustain and turn into a daily habit over time, it will help you sort of develop a certain kind of maturity in how you, you deal with your emotions in the market and how you deal with your emotions in trading, how you, will, you relate to them. And this simple solution will help you win the mental game of trading. And that solution that I'm going to present to you and your audience is science-backed, meaning it's reliable and really produces results. And towards the end of this presentation, I'll sh share a little bit of, about the research paper I'm currently writing uh, on, on the topic. So what is this mysterious solution that I'm referring to with that? Do you have, yep. do you have an idea? Uh, is it meditation? Yes, very simply it's-, wow. it's it's mindfulness meditation. And, and, and yes, not any kind of meditation, mm. but mindfulness meditation. That is the core of my approach to trading psychology. You know, mindfulness is something that I have a very particular interest in for a variety of reasons. Uh, first, first of which is, is that I, you know, I have a background as a Buddhist monk. I, I, I spent a lot of time living on Buddhist monasteries, studying meditation and, and the art of mindfulness and studying my own mind and my emotions and studying Buddhist philosophy and epistemology. Uh, and, and this has helped me tremendously in my own personal life. Now, you know, the, the best way to explain to you, Vivek, and your audience what mindfulness is, I think, is, is to guide you through a very short practice uh, are, are you are you are you okay if i guide you through a sh very short five minute practice awesome i mean i was not expecting this this is so exciting all right <laughs> all right so so let's begin so vivek and you know everyone else, else listening and, and and watching this sit comfortably right where you are eyes open eyes closed whatever you prefer when your eyes are closed, this lends to more of a sort of medita meditative state. Uh, when your eyes are open, this helps you ground you more. So, so it's really up to you. It, you know, just sit comfortably and become aware of your breathing. You breathing don't mind in. if I if I switch out, uh, if I close my eyes and no 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 just yeah, go, yeah close I'll just open close your specs and. I'll try to get into that zone. All right, sounds good. So focus on your breathing. Breathing in, know that you're breathing in. Breathing out, know that you're breathing out. And that's it, no, you know, nothing special, nothing esoteric, just simple breath awareness. You're not controlling the breath. You're just aware of it, ebbing, ebbing and flowing. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. Very simple. Feel the air moving, coming and going through your nostrils. Is it warm? Is the, is the air warm? Is it cold? What are the sensations around your nostrils? No judgment, just, just observing.
Now, become aware of all the sensations in your body. First, the sensations that make up your face. And then your head. Your ears. Your neck. Your chest. Your back. Arms. Hands. Your bum. Your thighs. Knees. Calves. Feet. Notice how it feels like to have clothes on. Feel your clothes touching your skin. No judgment, just, just bare awareness, simple awareness. Become aware of sounds in the room. Simply be aware with, be aware of what presents itself within that framework called the body. Stay alert and awake and attentive to what's arising, whatever that is. Discomforts, pleasant sensations. Once again, no judgment, bare awareness, pure awareness. See how attentive you can be to the arising of thoughts, whether it's images of the past or the future, whether it's your inner monologue passing judgments. We all have this little voice in our heads, constantly making judgments. Just observe it. Observe what's happening without adding anything to it. Just passively observing. Noticing, seeing. And notice what happens to thoughts the moment you notice them. Do they stay? Do they dissolve and disappear? Just notice. And see how impermanent they are, how, how, how insubstantial they are when you don't hold on to them, when you, you don't grasp at them, when you don't cling to them, when you just observe them. Notice how impermanent, selfless, and insub, insubstantial they are. They arise one moment, and the next moment they're gone on their own.
Now for, for the last part, bring your attention back to the autonomous breath. Notice how it's there all along. It's, it's always there in the background. And that's it, Vivek. Uh, about five minutes went by, a little bit more. You can open your eyes. How is that? I felt like, uh, so I was just trying to figure out my body, every part of my body. And I felt like I'm so different from this body mm. as if I'm carrying this body. Mm. Very interesting. Very and interesting. I, I felt very uh, irritating in some parts. Mm. I was like, and how, 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 how did you approach that, that irritation? Uh, did you observe it or did you, what, what did you do? So I was feeling like I should cry. I should just, it's like some part of my body was like, wanted to bust out because maybe I never focused on that part ever. And today suddenly they've realized that there is a focus on me. Mm. So yeah, it was good experience. Overall, I was, I think, is there any vacuum? It looks like there is a vacuum around and I can't hear anything. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <my> mind. <laughs> yes. Um, look, Vivek, when, when you meditate like that, when, when you pay attention non judgmentally to your experience in the moment, and you can do that 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, a day whatever amount of time you, you have to do it, it's what this does is that you're, you're giving yourself the permission to be with yourself and to feel whatever it is that you're feeling, the good, the bad, you're, you're not discriminating. And when you do that, when you are with yourself like that, you're, you're sort of changing your relationship with yourself. And this is, this is life-changing, Vivek, when, when, when you don't sort of constantly try to distract yourself from the unpleasant sensations in your body, when you actually look into them, look into their nature and, 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 dare I say, be, befriend them, become friends with them. That's when paradoxically they, they lose their power over you. It's, it's this willingness to look into your discomfort and to face what's difficult within you. But I, I, I hope you got a sense of the simplicity of, of, of the practice, of the instruction with regards to, to, to the practice of mindfulness. It's, it's really that simple. And um, you know, actually, this right there is are, are the instructions, pretty much, not not quite, but pretty much all the instructions for the practice of mindfulness. It's 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 really all you need to know. It's sitting or standing in any postures, uh, uh, eyes closed, eyes open, whatever you prefer, and simply being acutely aware of what's arising and doing it non-judgmentally, and and then seeing what what you learn from being aware like that, Vivek. Sure. And when, when, when you develop that introspective practice, I mean, it's, it's life-changing and it's bound to have implications for your trading as well, because you're being more aware of your emotions, uh, um, your, your difficult emotions, your pleasant emotions, and, and you're, you're, you're more sort of, it gives you the, this, this capacity to be more objective in the market. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's what m mindfulness is. I mean, um, yeah, so, so, so like you, you will often hear platitudes about, you know, mindfulness is, is living in the present mo moment. You, you often hear that a lot online, on, 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 the, on the internet. Mindfulness is living in the present moment. But this doesn't really fully describe what mindfulness is. Dogs, for instance, Vivek, they, they live or, or they seem to live in the present moment, right? They, but when you look at them, they're, they're not mindful at all. They, they don't look mindful at all. I mean, they're, they're all over the place. So mindfulness has to mean something else, something deeper than just living in the present moment. And a, a better defin, def, definition of what mindfulness is, 
uh, I, I think is, is it's the awareness. Mindfulness is the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Non-judgmentally, me meaning that you're feeling whatever it is that you're experiencing in the, in, the, in the present moment and you're being aware of it with exquisite detail. And, 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 and when you're doing it, while, while you're doing it, while, while you're observing your, your, your experience, you're doing it with complete acceptance without an ounce of craving for what's pleasant and aversion for what's unpleasant, for what's uncomfortable. And that's, that's a better way of describing what mindfulness is, in my opinion, instead of, of describing it as, as just living in the present moment. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, so once again, as, as, as you mentioned at the very beginning, yeah, emotional intelligence, you know, maturity in how you deal with your emotions is a very important aspect of, of, of trading, not even trading, of investing as well. And, and so mindfulness can help you develop that, that, that emotional intelligence on purpose because you're doing it on purpose. This is a practice that you're doing every day when you, know, you could do it in the morning, you could do it you know, at, at in, in the evening, but you're doing it every day. And that practice, that ongoing practice is, is making some very, is, is, is causing some very durable changes in your brain. And that's, that's, that's been scientifically proven. So this is not some, some sort of practice uh, that you do out there that you don't know if it's really going to work. No, mindfulness, th there's an onslaught of scientific research that's, that's happening right now in the scientific world about mindfulness. And, 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 and the practice has been, has, been, um, you, you, you know, has, has been confirmed to have so many benefits for people in general, let alone traders. I mean, it's very beneficial for traders, but for people at large who wanna to learn to deal with, the, with their emotions better, who wanna develop that, that so-called emotional intelligence that you mentioned at the very beginning, um, mindfulness can help you develop those. Sure. Um, so can yeah. you uh, can it be more specific? Like if, if someone does this practice, say uh, before the market opens or during the market hour, and uh, you know, just think about nothing. Uh, how does it help a person uh, in trade management? Right. So, so this 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 capacity to to take some time aside for yourself every single day. What this does is that it slows down your racing thoughts. And you know, when when we when we approach the market, Vivek, we tend to do that with a lot of anxiety. Uh, and, and a lot of fear sometimes, because look, the stakes are high, okay? Our hard-earned money is involved here. So, so, so it's normal that, that we feel fearful and greedy and, and, and we, feel, we feel formal, fear of missing out. We fear anxiety as to how things will unfold for us. And, and this is totally normal because once again, our hard-earned money is involved and we want to make money. We want to keep money. We, we, you know, we, but it, when, when you let those emotions, those, those urges, those impressions sort of uh, work in the background without you being aware of them, what, what this has the potential to do, what this often does is that it, it, it makes you make st stupid emotional based trading errors and that, that, that derail your long-term performance. And so what mindfulness does, what a consistent daily practice does, it's, it is that it helps slow down your racing thoughts and, and it helps you connect with this, with, with your emotions and, and observe your emotions. Um, uh, and and so, so that you can become more aware of them. So, so it sets the tone for your trading day so, so that you're more aware and rational. And, uh, and as you said, emotional intelligence uh, and, and emotionally prepare for the, for the trading session. So for me personally, it's been a game changer in my trading, let alone my personal life. In my personal life, it's helped me manage a congenital stutter that, I've, that I have, that I always had, right? Since, you know, since I, for, for as long as I, as I can remember, that's been the challenge of my life. And if we had this conversation a few years ago, Vivek, I wouldn't be able to form a coherent sentence while talking to you right now, I, I would repeatedly stumble on my words. 
um, this this stutter, this speech impediment was was a big, big uh, challenge in my life. But now with a consistent meditation practice, and I've been practicing meditation for many, many years now, it's helped me develop this awareness of my of my internal state, of my emotions, of my thoughts. And I Nowadays, I have more control over that speech impediment, so much so that you can barely hear it right now. You know? so, so it's helped me tremendously in my personal life. Now in my trading, it's helped me become a more objective actor, a, 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 more, a more, um, more, more aware of my emotions as, as they're happening. So, so I'm less prone to trading errors. I'm more rational in the market. Uh, so that's that's what it does to 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 answer your question. Sure, sure. Got your point. Yeah, yeah. So so as I said, my you know mindfulness has been is is backed by science. It's it it helps in better decision making. Uh, it reduces thoughts that create stress and anxiety. Increases concentration. Helps manage emotion em- emotions. Helps you contextualize the ups and downs of the market. Because look, losses are a reality of the market. Losses are a reality of trading. Uh, and they, they're an in, inevitable part of the process of trading. Losses are going to happen, you know? So how you go through losses um, determines to a large extent the, the, the sort of trader you are and the sort of long-term results you're, you're going to get, you know? If, if losses get to your head and, and it, it, you know, destabilizes you, destabilize you emotionally, it's, it's going to be hard to be consistent, to stay consistent in the market, because you're going to tend to make those trading errors I, you know, I mentioned earlier, FOMO, revenge trading, and so on. So science con- confirms med- you know, meditation. So it's, it's not just, you know, it's, 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 it's not just, uh, it's, it's serious stuff, all right? And uh, now, uh, a lot of l- legendary traders, like Ray Dalio, for instance, uh, was some of the most renowned traders and investors out, out, out there. They use some form of meditation to help them develop and maintain a, a trading or investing psychology edge. They begin their trading day sitting on a meditation cushion. For instance, Ray, Ray Dalio, founder and, 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 and CEO of, of, what's the name? Bridge, Bridgewater Associates. Uh, you, you know, the world's largest hedge fund famously said meditation more than any other factor uh, has been the reason for for what success I've achieved. And, and, and Ray Dalio has been has uh, even built many of the principles uh, uh, and that he learned as a longtime meditation practitioner into his his firm's culture. Now, mm-hmm. Paul, Paul Tudor Jones as well meditates. You know, he, 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 here's what he said about the practice. Meditation has helped me become a better individual, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And Tudor Jones became famous in the 80s and is known for his macro trades, particularly his bet on, on, on currencies and, and what else? Currencies and interest rates, I believe. Um, and Linda, Linda Rashke as well, a veteran trader featured in, in Jack Schwager's Market Wizards, is also a fan of meditation. She, she said, quote, ultimately, it, she was referring to meditation, will help you stay in control of yourself in the market, end quote. And those market legends and, and many others, they, 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 they certainly practice different styles of meditation. But all of them, all of them have an element of mindfulness to them. And look, Vivek, one thing I have to add is, is that you know, even though I've personally spent a lot of my time studying mindfulness and its epistemology in Buddhist monasteries, in a Buddhist context, mindfulness isn't Buddhist. You know, it's not Hindu. It's not Muslim. It's not, it's not Christian. Mindfulness is not a religion. I, I, I hope I made this clear. My, mindfulness is a fundamental quality of the human mind. And it's accessible to anyone who's willing to look into it. And I, I, you know, I hope this was clear. Yep. Now, very important note. You know, Vivek, I'm not saying that you can meditate your way to financial success. I'm, I'm not saying that, that meditation replaces uh, 
proper market understanding or probabilistic thinking. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that it replaces a statistical edge in the market. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that a consistent meditation practice will help you understand your emotions better, will help you sort of manage them better, will give you the space to process sorrow and grief from losses, will help calm yourself down uh, when you feel ecstatic after a winning trade, let's say. It's, it's essentially, a consistent meditation practice will help you cultivate a quality called equanimity, which, which is this sort of balance of mind. Composure, which is a key element in, in being consistent in the market and in being and staying consistent in the market. And it, it will help you develop a quality of, of acceptance of the, this process called life you know, of, of this, of, of the natural evolution of things. And this is bound to impact the way you trade positively. Yeah. I mean, and uh, yeah, so, 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 you know, meditation is, is very, very helpful, but it doesn't replace a market edge for sure. Sure. Now, a little story I, I, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for, 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 for stories uh, with, with a powerful message especially those coming from, from the Zen tradition. They, they often seem strange and confusing at first, but when you look closely into them, they, they contain some profound wisdom. And, and, and I wanna share one with, with you and your audience here. So one day, you, you know, there was a little boy, he was playing on, on the beach and, and he saw an old man in the distance. And that old man was, was sitting in a squat position and, and, and seemed to be looking down. So the, the boy decided he, he, he wanted to go look what, you know, what, what the old man was, 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 was doing. So he, he moved closer. And as he moved closer, he, he saw that the old man was, was drawing some sort of circle into the sand using a stick. And the circle was perfect was really, it, it was a perfect circle. So the, 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 the little boy was so impressed and he, he said, hey, old man, how did you draw such a perfect circle? And the old man said, I don't know. I, I just tried and tried and tried and tried again. Here, take the stick, you try. <laughs> and, and so the, the, the old man, you know, got up and he walked away. And as he, he, he walked away, he turned his head and looked at the boy. And the, the boy took the, the, the stick and he started practicing in the sand, drawing circles and circles and circles. The, the boy perplexed, he, you know, he, he was perplexed because his, his, his circles were anything but, but, okay. but, uh, but, but, but circles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's, at first, his circles came out too wide or too long or too crooked. Um, but as, as time went by, the circles began to, to, to look better and better. And he kept trying and trying and trying every day. And then one bright morning, he drew a, a perfect circle into the sand. And then he, he heard a small voice behind him. Hey, old man, how did you draw such a perfect circle? Yeah. So, so this it's 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 a beautiful story Vivek it's 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 a short and beautiful zen story that centers on 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 the circle as as a shape and 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 the symbol of perfection this circle is is called enzo uh, it, it's 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 a sac sacred symbol in in zen and and basically you, you know it's tr tr traditionally drawn uh, using using one movement only right you, like so you don't lift your pen or the stick you just draw it using one movement only. What's it called? And, en Enzo. Yes. Yes. How do you spell it? And, 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 and it's a sort of meditative practice in letting go of the thinking mind, you know, and allowing your body to just flow. Right. How, how do you spell it? Enzo. Uh, e N S O. E N S O. Okay. Yes. And, and, and th this story, it's the, the, the perfect circle draw, drawn in, in the sand represents the necessity of repeated effort. You know, practice makes perfect, Vivek. Mm. While, while, and, and so 
you know, often as traders, we, we view success as, as a sort of destination. We, we see ourselves at the beginning of the road or, or at the bottom of a mountain, and we picture as uh, our destination, you know, as this thing that's far away. But that viewpoint is problematic, I think, because it, it causes many to feel discouraged at, because of their lack of progress. They're not seeing the results immediately. And, and so they get impatient, you know, because success a perfection, proficiency, you know, it looks far, far away, right? But uh, if, if you take this approach of, of sort of, you, you, for, you forget the destination and you focus on the process, you, you focus on being here and you focus on mastery, on getting better, then the, 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 the destination doesn't seem that far anymore because you are completely involved in the process of becoming better, of becoming an expert, of becoming a master. And um, that's what traders should, should learn to focus on, the process of learning to trade. And just forget the results. You know, the, the results will come later. But you know, as of right now, you're, 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 learning, you're learning a craft. You're, you're, you're learning a craft that allows you to print money, right? And, and, and so it's, it's a very useful craft in, you know, in life because once you have it, nobody can take this away from you. You know, you have it for life. But at first, you got to learn the craft. You got to learn how things work. You got to map out the territory. And that's how you, you become proficient at something. So try to view trading, your trading journey as a process, as, as, as sort of this drawing of the Enzo circle. And I'm, I'm going to stop rambling now. And I'm going to let you ask me any questions if you have any. No, no, you please go ahead because you are just opening up my mind so much. And I can clearly see your you know, you, I mean, there's so much inside you, which should come out. So please go ahead. I have no questions. You just keep on doing it. Yeah. So, so that's pretty much it. You know, um, 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 uh, trade, trading is a, trading is very similar to, to life. You know, there's a process to it, Vivek. And most people feel like they're not going anywhere. They struggle. Look, at, at the end of the day, trading is a game of statistical probability. Mm -hmm. right there are risks there are stakes and 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 there's an expected value and and so the the you, the system that you use your trading strategy your trading system it gives you that positive expected value which means that in the short term results are not guaranteed the market is uncertain you, you know it it does what it does uh, um, but if you follow your trading strategy your trading system to a t over the long term you're virtually guaranteed. You're virtually guaranteed to make more money than you lose. And that's not my opinion. That's not Ivan's opinion. That, that's a statistical fact. Look, if you use a structure, a trading system that has a positive expected value, a long-term positive expected value, given the fact that trading is a game of statistical probability, you know, you know, it's pretty obvious that you don't need to be a genius to understand that, that, that should you stick with that system, you should get positive results over the long run, even though in the short term, trade outcomes are typically randomly you know, distributed. Sometimes you get wins, sometimes you get losses, sometimes you get streaks of wins, sometimes you get streaks of losses, but should you keep trading over the long run, you should come out on top. And this is very hard for people to understand, to embrace, uh, because I, I think they're not approaching the, the, you know, this trading endeavor with the right mindset. Um, and that's a problem because that's, that's what causes the high failure rate in this field. And um, ho hopefully I was able to shed some light on, on how, how this works and, and, and on the importance of trading psychology. And look, if, if I, I share trading psychology insights on a daily basis on my Twitter, uh, my handle is is at trading composure without the e at the end. Uh, and if if you need some some sort of pick me up, some sort of insights, wisdom, on on a daily ba basis, that you know this this will help you sort of uh, keep your mind and your heart in the right place as as you go through this this uh, challenging but very rewarding journey. Then follow me on Twitter. Give me a follow there. Uh, it's it's free. It's free content, and uh, I, I I share share you know a tweet every every couple of hours or so, and this will help you win win the mental game of trading. 
Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. This is, this is very unique face to face. And I'm really, really glad that I did this with you because this is one communication, which I've been constantly harboring on people that this is what differentiates a successful trader from a not so successful trader. Thank you so much for this amazing content. Really enjoyed it. And I'm sure that uh, people will follow you on Twitter. And as I've been following you, I've been, you know, learning a lot from your tweets uh, and becoming a better person uh, every time I watch something from you. So thank you so much for this thank amazing you. content. And I'm sure people will learn a lot from you and people would love to be in touch with you. So hopefully I'll also meet you someday. Yes. Yeah, I, I would love that, actually. And I, I, I would like to thank you as well, Vivek, for, for, for having me over and for, for, be, for, for being willing to have this, this, this conversation with me. And I've been listening to some of your in, in interviews. I mean, it's the, the work that you're doing, that you're putting out for free is just unparalleled. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Very insightful um, in, interviews, conversations. And um, yeah, it, it's um, look, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. It means a lot. And uh, let, let me be in touch with you. And uh, let's see if I come to your town or if you come to my town, we'll be definitely having more interactions like these offline. Amazing. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care.